Pasha dieback is affecting sown pastures from southern, central and north Queensland. The Price family here at Hilly Vale in the Arcadia Valley have had dieback for a couple of years here and they've been contacting us to try and understand what they can do about pasture dieback and what management solutions could be applicable for them. So this country in the valley, we've had it for 59 years. We've been in the valley, our family's been here for 59 years. We hadn't noticed pasture dieback until the end of 2018, start of 2019. It just wasn't in our, you know, it just wasn't, wasn't on our radar. We didn't, we'd never noticed it until then. But it's very obvious now that it's here and it's an issue and we have to deal with it. I guess we underestimated the damage it did to our dry matter production in our country. It's very hard to gauge when you're looking at a paddock how much feed you have in it when, when it's a dieback situation and you're not used to having dieback in your pasture. It's taken about a third of the pasture yield out of our country and where you have the dieback in the grass species that you've got the dieback in, it's pretty much 100% loss of production in those areas that are affected. Really affected our gain to buffle and that was a fair bit of our productive capacity in our country. So we, I guess we can be grateful that we had Bill Wheeler Buffalo. If we didn't have that, I think we'd just about have been really out of business as far as running cattle. Even for productive pastures that don't have pasture dieback, planting perennial legumes such as desmanthus or stylos can be a very, very productive and profitable thing to do. When pasture dieback comes along and in effect takes the grass out, it provides a really good opportunity to get those legumes in, minimal cost, minimal effort, with a great result usually afterwards. And so one of the recommendations that we have provided is for them to establish some legumes and in particular they've planted Prochades desmanthus into affected paddock with dieback and that's been quite successful. So in our situation with pasture dieback because it was over such a broad area over so many paddocks we physically couldn't get over all our country with any sort of mechanical intervention so some of it we've just had to do through grazing management. It, it seems pretty evident to me that you have to reduce your stocking rates and you have to control your grazing in your dieback country because we've noticed that the cattle tend to hang in your dieback country because it must be a little bit sweeter. So that's been helpful and it's very obvious when you look at the recovery in our paddocks, the, the paddocks that have got the spell, that have had the spell, that have had less mouths in them, do respond, have recovered, have regenerated a little bit faster. From time to time, I think this is just another thing that we're going to have to manage in our grazing pasture, in our system, and we have to have the flexibility in our business to handle it. For more information on pasture dieback, producers can join the Pasture Dieback Industry Network, which is run by the Queensland Department of Agriculture and Fisheries. Alternatively, you can look online at the Future Beef, MLA and New South Wales DPI websites, or you can call the DAF Call Centre on 13 25 23 and talk to your local beef extension officer.